Welcome to Rule of Thirds, an offshoot of our Screen Refresh podcast. Our goal every month is to take a little break from watching and analyzing movies to dive headfirst into some nostalgia, or just get a little creative. So every month we select a different topic and create a top three list that may or may not be near and dear to each of our hearts. You're doing it, Peter. I'm doing it. <laughs> I don't like how if we the, all believe. <laughs> the, it's been so long, viewers, <laughs> listeners. Viewers soon, but not quite yet. Listeners, it's been a long time since uh, this vacation rust is definitely there. Why are you clapping? Oh, you! I'm believing it. Yeah, gotta in. clap your hands. <laughs> gotta clap your hands. <laughs> I didn't realize that we had a a plug for all of our socials in the intro, so I just stumbled over it because I just did this it's plug for the socials in the old outro too. Shoot us a message on Instagram. Twitter, Facebook at Screen Refresh, or shoot an email at ScreenRefresh.com. ScreenRefresh at gmail.com. Let us know what your top three are or suggest future topics. Yeah, that is it, huh? I mean, technically, they can shoot it to ScreenRefresh.com. <laughs> they could. They the, could. the site's in progress. It's not up, but I think the, the email should still route to our Gmail. Well, we're back, guys. I'm your host, Nick. And I'm joined by my co-hosts, Dean and Tim. In today's topic, we're covering our top three aliens. By Grebthar's hammer. What is You shall be avenged. Oh. (laughs) I went went with the other one. So it's it's kind of topical that we're doing top aliens. I know we have come... I don't know. I was about to say come out of retirement. We came out of uh, summer vacation mode. After watching Prey, which we've all seen at this point, right? Um, yeah. I mean, technically we already have come out of summer vacation mode. Chronologically. Oh, because by this at the, point... At the, time of, at the time of this uh, recording. recording, this is our... Uh, we don't know, Dean, until you can show <laughs> us a file. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Dear see, listener, listeners, we were supposed to come back. Hysteria hostage. We were supposed to come back August first, but uh, <laughs> Dean decided that uh, summer vacation should end when uh, the kids go back to school. <laughs> He's so damn I guess good we're going to be. Listen, we're gonna Tim, be this is like it's like if you got done work and I said, "All right, Tim, do more of that work, but just for different reasons." <laughs> Dean, you know how I feel after a long day of doing IT stuff. I get home and the internet's not working. No, I gotta, I gotta go right back into that pit, man. <laughs> gotta go right back in. Dean, so what you're saying is you should have the most practice about doing it efficiently. No, and Be- no. <laughs> so you're saying that you're inept at your job? I'm definitely, definitely that. <laughs> Yeah, we'll go with that. If that buys me another week, we'll go with that. <laughs> Wait, you need you need a week? What do you mean buying you a week? Buying you a week? Oh yeah, no, we don't need another week. Yeah, it'll be this. We'll be good. It'll be ready by the end of this episode. I mean, <laughs> so you just hear your <laughs> keyboard furiously clacking in the background of all of this. I don't recording. know how I'd make that work, but sure. <laughs> You're just you're just going by feel. You're not even listening to the track. I know. I know you cut this out or not. I don't know, but um, it did make like there were points in the episode that I laugh. Like you guys make me laugh. I laugh at myself, but only when you guys laugh. I'm like, okay, I think it's funny. I'm laughing too. So I think it'll be good. <laughs> it's like that one Ty Burrell gift from Modern Family of like the the head shake and then the head nod of. <laughs> <laughs> no no okay oh oh, oh yep uh-huh. yep we like it we like it we like it sensible chuckle um so I, like, I, I i mean editing is one thing but hearing an episode by the time it is edited out you know we'll record not not even joking on dean's um punctuality when it comes to the edits but in all seriousness if we record you know, July 1st for an episode and it's expected to come out in August, I won't hear the edit until like two to three weeks afterward. By the time it's like edited down, I forgot what we said that whole night. Oh yeah, so you then get when to listen hear, to it as a listener. Yeah, so then once we actually get to hear it 
as a listener, it's like, wow, I said that, you know, I'm actually kind of funny or like, wow, I said that I need to tell Dean to cut that out. But, uh, <laughs> no, usually it's just, it's a, it's a good lesson even for us. Cause we even get surprised. Like I still remember our first time. Um, I think it was the mortal Kombat edit that one, just the edits that you decided to do was fucking hilarious. <laughs> We, we had a lot of good setups in that episode. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll go down as one of my favorite parts, favorite <laughs> moments from our podcasts. I finally did a bucket list thing, and I actually listened to the entirety of the Pure Mood soundtrack <laughs> for years you during really the commercial. <laughs> it was a roller coaster. There were some well, good times. Well, the Pure Mood was bad. rage. <laughs> pure rage. <laughs> Pure rage with hate breed. <laughs> you see, the new trend is cutting in Weezer into some songs. Specific Weezer? <laughs> no. Yeah, uh, like the Buddy Holly riff. No, I have to send. I'll have to find it. What are the kids up to today? Show me. No, oh, it's it's hard to keep up some days. Let the body set the flow. Let the body set the flow. Let the body set the flow. Let the body set the. So I mean, is that like a TikTok thing, or how how does that work? You make me feel so young <laughs> in a bad way when you say, "Is it like some TikTok thing?" All right, Gramps. So listen up. <laughs> I'll snow you later. TikTokers. Um, Yes, yes, it is. It is a TikTok thing. I like to think you guys I, can't see it, but Nick's Fortnite dancing right now. Yeah, <laughs> I can Was floss. It the floss, yes. There you go. Yeah, and I'm doing the one where you kind of fold down forward and flop your arms around. You know the one I'm talking about, listener. <laughs> I am. Tim, I am Tim lost. Doesn't know. <laughs> Being the youngest like, here, eh, and I feel the oldest right now. You know. <laughs> It's not all about dances anymore. The millennials kind of took it over. And now it's like, you like it, browsing Imager. Decennials. It's like Imager now. It's just pure memes at this point. I could dig it. With the advent of Dali, like, I think the entertainment will be in the hands of the people even more than it is already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dadaism has begun. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to achieve full ascension. So we should probably talk about rule of thirds. Extra terrestrials? So I guess we haven't talked to anybody about how we're going to do things a little bit differently to test it out. So coming back from summer vacation, rule of thirds, we're still going to do the three round pick. um, But I believe we're going to be doing a little bit more streamlined of round robin one person with one pick rather than three, three, and three. So it'll be a, a little bit shorter. Not unless I drag this out long enough. I mean, I'm editing, so I mean, I could drag this out for the next two hours. Lucky for you guys, but... And Tim's checking out. He just took off his headphone. He's um, he's packing up his mic. I'm going against <laughs> what we just discussed. I'm listening to my laptop just go wild with the fan right now, and I'm like, I, I just have Discord up. <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing taxing you right now. Chrome's not running in the background. Well, yeah, I always keep Chrome on. There you go. It's like it's like training with weighted clothing. This is Rogue Leader. I'm going in. How you doing back there, R2? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> then the day that then my laptop, I go in and I like, we need that extra power, and I close Chrome. <laughs> just takes off. The blinding light just emits. <laughs> And it's like, welcome to all two gigs of this processor. <laughs> Is that how you got to uh, Omaha? You just decided to watch YouTube for the entire flight and that was enough to get the fans going fast enough? <laughs> I Put just jumped directly the into the screen like Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. It's like Not how even. you, you save just... the plane that the engine has failed. Yeah, get out you there. Just, uh, you hold your laptop over your head like John Cusack and you save the day. <laughs> Turn on Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> if all of us take out our laptops 
But then it's all on one side of the plane, so then it ends up throwing <laughs> yeah, off the just, weight. <laughs> totally overpowers Damn. the regular engine. It would have worked, too. The aliens. So top aliens. Who I do you, who 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 wants to go first? It's kind of weird because it's like since we now only have one pick each, it's like who wants to be out of this show I have earliest? To go last. <laughs> and not say anything for the rest so, of the show. Uh, <laughs> choose wisely. I can go first. We did this format because of my editing times, right? So it's a shorter episode, so it's just it's easier to edit. I think overall we just did it because now that we're trying to expand what everybody kind of behind the curtain on screen refresh, we're trying to kind of expand things out a bit. Nick has created us a discord as a community for all of the, the listeners looking to discuss movies and talk about shows and games and just have other people to kind of enjoy all of these things with rather than kind of being in a vacuum. And then we have other things going on that we're trying to get up and going. Uh, there's other shows we have going on between Rule of Thirds and the flagship screen refresh. And I have Don't Open This Podcast on to, uh, the second and fourth hey, Mondays. Hey, your plug is at month. the end of the episode. <laughs> Don't double dip. <laughs> and it, it's like everybody's got another project going. Dean is overworked. So am I. Tim's the only one that's got multiple things going on. <laughs> So I think different. doing a shorter rule of thirds will either give us more opportunity to do more fun ideas um, or kind of incorporate some other things. I'm interested in doing like a uh, a pilot season of let's do like a half hour episode of a bunch of different ideas and then just release them like week by week or like a couple weeks by couple weeks and then see what stuff ends up sticking with people. We need a lot of logos. It'll just be the, uh, we'll cover each episode of the 90s Gundam Wing show, and it'll be called uh, Gundam Wingmen, and then we'll do Screen Refresh Goes Berserk, and we'll cover all of Berserk. We're going to need a lot of logos. It's good for the economy. We'll just yeah. uh, keep pumping Fiverr for more. S support local artists. So, top aliens. The, the top alien in my heart uh, is not the one that I ended up picking. So I think this is kind of a a tough one because there's certainly aliens that would just naturally be my number one. It would be Predator. And if it wasn't Predator, it would end up probably being The Thing from The Thing. But I wanted something a little bit different that isn't so obvious for me. So I don't know if you guys have ever heard of a a little movie called Spaced Invaders. From Touchstone Pictures. Let's jam, dude. Five spaced out Martians are spending their spring break on Earth. Toga, toga, toga. Whoa, that guy's toast. And everyone is joining in. You want to be in our wet park to can't <laughs> Maybe Whoa, who ordered the quarter tonner? Does she come with fries? Now, it's the most Excellent. party ever. Blue eye, blue eye. We go now. Spaced Invaders. Na, 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 na. Rated PG. Starts Friday, April 27th at a theater near you. Spaced Invaders? Spaced Invaders. I've seen right. a, a pun on Space Invaders, the, the game. It's a 1990 movie. It came out in the 90s? Explain. I thought it was in the 80s. Wait, what? Well, technically, yeah, it probably was made in the 80s, and then by the time it came out, it was technically 1990, because every time I saw screenshots of that... I always thought it was a lot older than what it was because it reminds me of like Ghoulies and um, like that era of movie making. So yeah, so I picked the, the 1990 movie Spaced Invaders. It it has a bit of kind of a, a more low-key classic feel to it, I think, just because it is, I don't know what the time period it's supposed to take place in, but it's about all of these Martians who end up getting a, a distress signal and all of them are kind of the not the the best Martian soldiers they're kind of like a very incompetent group of them but they end up going and intercepting a distress signal from a fleet and then they end up having a part of the signal that's coming through is a Halloween rebroadcast of Orson Welles War of the Worlds so it kind of has all of that feel to it of them crash landing onto Earth and then it ends up being that all of the people are seeing the the spaced invaders and all of the the Martian groups and 
now all of a sudden that all of them are panicking and it's all very War of the Worlds, but it's... I remember all of the aliens are given a very distinct look, these little guys, and then one of them, if I recall, has like a Jack Nicholson impression the entire movie. I think that's Blasney, um, their pilot. Gee, officer, what seems to be the problem? No license, no registration, no plates, no headlights, no taillights, no wheels, and I clocked you going 3,000 miles per hour. That's... 2,945 miles an hour in excess of the posted limit. Great. There goes my insurance. But that's what always stuck with me was just his impersonation of Jack Nicholson the entire time. <laughs> I wonder if they... That influenced um, the, that uh, Destroy All Humans game. Possibly. Because the, the main guy that you play as... Has a Jack Nick like randomly? It's like a Jack Nicholson voice. Let me tell you something, Pox. You're a smart cookie, but there's a time for thought and there's a time for action, and this is one of those times. Which the second one? Oh, then that definitely has to be. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it works for the video game, but it does say, seem kind of random because this was after Nicholson's prime, so it's not like. You know, this was what, Xbox and PlayStation 2 era? And he wasn't really pumping out anything new that would demand that as a, a voice impression for the main protagonist, so. Yeah, because if I remember, he... I'm trying to find him. He had sunglasses the entire movie. Yeah, didn't he have like a bomber jacket on too? Yeah. <laughs> I do appreciate the design of the aliens, like, and the animatronics that go into it. it's still i know it's like yeah their mouths aren't perfect and things aren't perfect but i'd rather watch that than goddamn cgi yeah cgi is gonna I get mean, I, it's gonna get there cgi will be it'll be it'll look real someday but it's just like man nothing beats the the suits with the animatronics for me well i think the other thing at least for me is there's a time and the place for all of the CGI stuff, which right. as I said, like, it'll get there where it'll be even more amazing. It's, like, it's great now. There's still certain things that you can watch and be like, oh, well, that's definitely CGI. But I think the the practical and the animatronics and all of that still has, like, a certain heart to it that I lose when it's entirely CGI. Yeah. And I don't know if that's a product of the cgi itself or if it's a product of the writing and the work done behind it that i just don't feel that same connection to it or if i'm just nostalgic for guys in goofy suits i think it's i think guys in goofy suits really <laughs> do a lot more for a movie because even thinking back like the super mario brothers movie was terrible but the prosthetics, the makeup work, all of the stuff that they did, it looked great. Say what you will about the Goombas, they look good, you know? Yeah. Now, can you imagine, like, a, like this is supposed to be Nintendo's top big movie, but the CGI is shit within the first five minutes. It kind of changes the whole aspect of everything, and yeah, I don't know. I think it's, when you make something totally CGI, it, I guess, positively and negatively there's no restrictions now on what you can do. Like you can have the character do anything. Um, I don't know. It kind of, I don't know. It, it's, I don't know. It's weird to say it's like, it opens it up to like, yeah, I can have the camera go anywhere and do anything. But sometimes it's too much or a more of a strained. Approach yeah. But you is, stand is on the shoulders of geniuses and you're so preoccupied <laughs> in whether or not you could, you just didn't stop to think of whether or not you should. Very well. So put. many, so many movies come out where it's just, why did we have to do this in CGI? Like, there was one scene in Predator, or not Predator, I'm sorry, Prey. Um, you know, my wife called it out, and she's like, that looks like a terrible CGI rabbit. <laughs> I get yeah, why yeah, they did so. that, but and that was something little, but other movies do the same exact thing for a much bigger sequence, and it's just like, man, can you, couldn't you have just tried to do it a little bit practically? Because I'm sure... I'm sure it probably would have been cheaper 
they make it sound like in all these new modern movies that oh this would have been so much more expensive to do than in cgi like well your budget was 150 million dollars that's a lot of money you couldn't have done this practically (laughs) right you're forcing all these guys to work overtime in a freaking computer lab churning out these 3d models i'm pretty sure i'd money would go a little further if you just you know hooked up with stan winston studio or something I mean, I wonder also if it's a case that they're already employing the CGI studio that they can reuse certain assets or there's already stuff that they're kind of makes it easier on them and saves them money that way. I know. Especially for something like that of like creating a realistic snake and a realistic uh, rabbit that fight each other and then get attacked and then all of that kind of stuff. In um, Rise of Skywalker, that's why the Emperor had a fleet of Star Destroyers, because they had the model already made when they did Rogue One. <laughs> so they didn't have like, to redo mm, anything. For <laughs> Yeah. Little Ariana Richards is in this movie. Mm-hmm. Lex in the is that Flesh. Her, uh, breakout role before... The end. <laughs> before her... <laughs> career so yeah this would have been this is 1990 so and then there was tremor what What i'm talking about this was her breakout role to get her that uh, tremors yeah oh to get tremors yeah because tremors i didn't think it was until what 92 or something i think you're right i should know we just that was the last (laughs) episode we did before we went on summer break (laughs) tremors was also 1990 so Big mm. year for Ariana Richards. Space and Space Invaders. Seeing the aliens, I'm like, oh yeah, I've seen these aliens, but the name of the movie, and I definitely haven't like seen like the movie in a whole as a whole. But now I want to watch it. We should do this movie. This looks like a movie we would do. Oh yeah, and I, I've seen, I would I've, pick this. <laughs> I've never, I've never seen it, but I've seen clips of it so many times as a kid because I would be scrolling through the channels, and you can't forget this alien design at all no yeah, oh, yeah. And I, we'll, we'll have to post it yeah and i i remember seeing like clips of the end or something and i just never sat and actually watched it but this never left me as a kid i always remembered seeing those faces i remember there was another alien movie but not like not like biological alien i think they were more like technological uh batteries not included Growing mm-hmm. up, that was another one we liked, but I think my brother preferred that one, and I preferred this one, because I just like little wise ass, grody little alien guys. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get into batteries. I I I watched it more as a kid. I know I definitely watched it, but I didn't care for it. So that is my first and final pick. <laughs> The be all end all alien for you under the That's new it. law. <laughs> At him, Space Invaders, Mister Time. Also, go listen to Don't Open This Podcast every second. Oh, never mind. Oh, oh, it's getting cut. You can take it your sweet time. <laughs> Just cut him out of this whole episode. The whole thing. It's, it's gonna be TikTok Dean memes. Every time Tim talks, it's just gonna be a TikTok meme. <laughs> um so dean what is your number one alien of all time i get to go last i don't care um my number one alien of all time it's a cheat because it's well it's not really a cheat you did a group of aliens right you didn't say specifically the jack nichols an alien no yeah it was just okay. a group of aliens it's not a cheat then um you blew uh, the blue, yellow, and red, orange aliens of the Monstars. <laughs> <laughs> no, the 1988 comedy with Gina Davis. Earth Girls uh... are easy. It's the classic story. Sex. Aliens crash. <laughs> aliens have close encounter. Aliens discover Earth Girls are easy! You're an alien, and I'm from the valley, and uh, we may not even be, you know, anatomically correct for each other. Earth Girls are easy! No, With no, Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum! A 
movie with more curves than the Pacific coastline. Surf's up, boys. Don't miss Earth Girls Are Easy, Friday at 3, right here at Comedy Central. This is like a movie that I watched on Comedy Central a lot. Like, Comedy Central used to run, maybe they still do. I don't watch television. I don't have cable, okay? Who watches Comedy Central? <laughs> they used to run movies all the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, classic I mean, movies. Like that, I, I think that's where I saw like Transylvania 65,000, yep. Once Bitten. Yep. All yes of that to both of those. Um, Earth Girls Are Easy stars Gina Davis as the titular, not titular, she's the easy Earth Girl, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Don't besmirch Gina Davis. She's Earth's most easiest girl. Um, she gets invaded. Excuse no. <laughs> this is a family show, sir. Phrasing. Are you not doing phrasing? By uh, three, I guess they're kind of horny <laughs> like aliens. <laughs> I mean, it's not by better. easy. It's actually how easy we can beat them at Pong. <laughs> right. How easily they can beat our Donkey Kong high scores. Um, what else were you playing back in the 1960s, Tim? <laughs> <laughs> well, we used to have this game in where it was 60s. like a wooden wheel and you had a stick. Yeah, they're they're easy at that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it really easy means. game. Easy game. But three aliens played by Jeff Goldblum, the blue one, Mac. Uh, oh, he's definitely an alien. Damon Damon Wayans. The yellow one, Zebo, and Jim Carrey, the red one, Whiplock. Um, which this is pretty much. It's almost like all three of them. Yes, they're aliens in their own right. I guess with their com- comedic styles and with Jeff Goldblum's way to be super stoic, but also kind of irreverent <laughs> and off the wall. But he wasn't that. He wasn't that so much. I guess at this point in his career, I think he was looking. Which at, was. 88. Was this before in Living Color? Because didn't Jim Carrey I and Damon so. Wayans both play together then? Yeah, I believe it was before that really took off. I'm Googling. I'm surprised they haven't done anything that. again with Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, that started in 1990. So, yeah, that's a great point. I, I, I was looking at it thinking, like, oh, they did the show together. That's how they knew each other. But no, this was before the show. And before he became a meme of, of himself. <laughs> Who, Jim? No, Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Jeff, oh, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, his whole character in this is like super stoic. Like, Wait, so this is... When did this come out? 88. 88? So this is after he did The Fly? Yes. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like it was... I Isn't mean, who Gina is it? Davis in that a, too? What's that? Gina Davis? Gina Davis? Yeah, yeah she's the they're at the too. height. She's at the height of like her uh, stardom. I'd oh, say. did they or, get like, married? She's like just just getting there. They got married, didn't I think. They? Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis. Yeah, I I I, I don't know. But the her husband cheats on her. She finds she comes home uh, and finds she like gets a makeover and then comes home finds him cheating. He's like playing doctor patient like with some woman. He's like, you aren't supposed to be here. He's almost like mad at her. Um, they were married. 85 <laughs> to 91. Uh, no, 87, 87 to 91. 87 to 91. The aliens, they're like, they're just like up there horny in space, I'm pretty sure. And they're sp- peeping. That was the original working title. <laughs> <laughs> horny, horny aliens in space. <laughs> Now I just want to see a remake with Kanye as every role, and it's just going to be Earth Girls or Yeezy. Oh, Jesus. Um, strike that from the record. No. That gets the womp. You can womp. if you want to, but you have to edit this. <laughs> um, Welcome to they... the Lost episode, listeners. <laughs> <laughs> it's, we'll call all that material together. Um... It's pretty much like if aliens don't know, it's just a fish out of water. Like aliens come and she tries to show them the 
how things, how humans do it. So it's just them kind of like watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> Bat aliens, the on this one. <laughs> the aliens come and they do it, okay? They do it and they come. Um, I have never seen this movie. It's, I it's, always see the trailer, but I never watched it. It's like... It's not the height of comedy, of course, but it it it's entertaining enough that the aliens like getting into these situations. Partway through, they get shaved, so they just don't have to put makeup on anymore, and they're just plain old Jeff Goldblum, Jeff Goldblum, Jim Carrey, and Damon Wayans. Um, Why should getting shaved? I guess just kind of going along. She takes them to the makeover chick that gave her the, the makeover in the beginning of the movie and they just sh- they shave them because they're furry um i really have not seen this <laughs> there's a really funny because because damon wayans because they have fur on it's they kind of make it known that they can imitate they just like copy directly the audio the sound of somebody so they could open their mouth and sound like whoever they wanted to or heard and like they're all getting revealed, and Damon Wayne steps out, and he's black. The other two are white, and there's in the in the woman's voice, Damon Wayne is like, "Is that Zebo? Oh my God, you're like totally black!" Like he's imitating. That's what she said when she shaped him. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, that's all I got. It's, it's it just, is a movie I've always wanted to see. I've I've seen, I think the poster and snippets of it. I think during the peak of Comedy Central, like when we were in high school and all that, when they were playing those movies a lot. Just I never sat and watched it. It definitely it gets. There's a lot of fodder for Jim, especially to be ridiculous, because um, he's still very much to energetic and rubber faced and can do a lot of wacky stuff. Because I know he was in. Um, once bitten in this yeah but it wasn't i think what east ventura that put him on the map oh yeah and that's and i know his tv show helped in living color but still because i um, think he ace ventura and another big one for him dropped the oh the mask i think and dropped and the Dumber. same year yeah, yeah. And oh and that's Dumber. what it was it was wait it was all three yes because I remember he had just like a murderer's row year. Yeah, 94. Like movie, like movie, movie. Three classics. And he had kid cartoons made of all three of those. <laughs> the 90s, ladies and gentlemen. Where I would be imitating things from Ace Ventura and my sisters would be like, "That you're not supposed to, don't do that. <laughs> That's not appropriate. I didn't know. Talking out of your I'm ta- talking out of my talking ass. out of your ass. <laughs> I'm like, ass? Oh, they're like, don't say that. <laughs> Do you have um, mint? Or but yeah, this is some banaka. <laughs> this is an entertaining one for him, especially. But they're all good. They all have good moments. It's I mean, it's I, worth I think, a watch. I think it's really the kind of movie that sits with all of those other ones of the the Comedy Central mid afternoon, like like the Once Bitten's, the Transylvania Six Five Thousands, like the all of the ones that are forgettable enough. But when I see them pop on, it's like, yeah, I'll sit down and I'll watch this. Yeah, it's it's worth your time. It was, it's one of those movies probably for some people that are like, wait, what is this? I've never heard of this. It could definitely have gone under the radar for a lot of people. Like, I just learned about a Bill Murray movie called Quick Change, where he's like a clown mm-hmm. from like 1990. Robs a bank. I've never heard of it. Yeah, right? <laughs> I think it could be one of those movies for people. Now you just learned about a Bill Murray movie called Quick Chains, where he's a clown. Robs a bank. So, Earth Girls are easy at beating at Pong. Was the full title of this movie. No, they played Pong all right. With joysticks. Giggity, giggity. So, Nick. Also Predator. I think that brings us to your number one alien of all time, bar none for this specific episode today at this moment. So I joked earlier, but it actually is Bismarcky from (laughs) Men in Black 2. Roll credits.
No, it's the xenomorph. Um, I don't believe it. These are a, a what? A xenomorph. It's a bug hunt. What exactly are we dealing with here? I, th I really wanted to do an alien. Ridley Scott alien um, episode back for uh, April for the alien holiday, but just I wanted to do something different, too much of a pain in the ass to try to figure out how to write it out and do something special instead of just doing a regular shtick every single time. So this is going to be the next opportunity that I can just talk about alien for the next like five, ten minutes. But yeah, no, it's definitely Alien. Actually, Stitch from Lilo and Stitch was a close second, but I didn't feel it was appropriate after Earth Girls are easy. <laughs> so. And the Xenomorph is? <laughs> well, I mean, it's a little more appropriate than let's go from Earth Girls are easy to something extremely family friendly. I mean, so, I guess uh, it kind of it ramped itself up. We go from Spaced Invaders to Earth Girls are easy to. Yeah, they. I mean, they scared the, the shit out of me alien. as a kid. And, um, I think high school was when I finally got to really sit and watch them all without getting the crap, you know, scared out of me. And then just having that full appreciation of just the, I'm talking just the, the uh, you know, Alien and Aliens. I don't really care about the third one, and I'm not really talking about any of the sequels after yeah. the second movie, really. All the new Ridley Scott ones, you know, take it or leave it. I actually try to do research and just kind of brush up on my alien lore. And there was like an hour long video on YouTube that explained all of it. But most of it was covering Prometheus and stuff. And I'm just thinking like, damn, man, I'm getting old. Back when I used to think it was just like the one movie and that's it. Now it's like I got to sit through figuring out why David was doing all of this stuff with genetic experimentation with what's her name? Uh, Numi Rapace. Like, I don't want to do this. I mean, I'm pretty <laughs> sure that's the exact thing that Ridley Scott said that entire time. Yeah, well, he's still making. Now I have to sit here and figure out what do. David's doing with all this stuff. I don't want to do this. <laughs> she should have given it to Neil Bloomkamp. God, I really wish she just get like, all right, have fun. Like, no, like a selfish toddler wanting to hog the toy to himself. You hear that, Ridley? Nah, I don't like him. At me, go for it. You're not welcome. Only him, though. No. Only him. Only him. We hold your art in higher <laughs> regard than we hold you. Nope, think, I'd rather see Avengers than his uh, two-hour war masterpiece. No, it wasn't even that. He made like some. The, he made the Duelist, right? Oh, um, the just yes, the duel, the duel. Yeah, yeah the, the duel. Matt Damon Ben Affleck thing. Because didn't yeah. he drop two like right around the same time? He did the duel and something else. I don't like, know. Back to back. But no one watched it because we're millennials <laughs> and we think Avengers is better. <laughs> you're laughing that's what he said no i know that's why i'm laughing because i yeah know. it's gonna drive me crazy if i don't know what his other movie was that year i mean i i give him credit i mean he did help create the, the, i mean he didn't create the alien but he did help create the vision of how we experience it we it's really what dan o'bannon that created alien and um that was a whole like there's there's YouTube videos and documentaries talking about like the history of Alien. I'm not gonna go into any of it because, like I said, I was trying to do the research, but I got caught up with all the David stuff instead. There's a lot of cool things that if you Google and just search on YouTube, like um, you know, history of Alien, the movie specifically Alien. Um, there's a lot of cool behind the scenes stuff. There's a lot of backstory. Um, they originally made this movie called Dark Star and it did really well, but it was like the college film kind of quality and they uh, took a lot of the beats and elements from that movie and when he made the new script, it eventually evolved into Alien that we know today. And that whole story and behind the scenes thing is amazing to watch. There was a documentary on the uh, DVD Blu-ray for Alien and it covers a lot of that behind the scenes totally worth watching i think it's on par with the same like behind the scenes stuff that lord of the rings had for the collector's editions it's about on par with that when in terms of like 
behind the scenes stuff that's cool and worth watching. So, I mean, it's cool. I mean, you got the thing that evolves the, all the different ways that it does, and then depending on what it face hugs onto, it takes the characteristics of whatever it did. So I always thought that was cool, especially with how the video games handle it too. So you get to see more than just the that one specific um, like warrior type. You get like the bull and the I love like the, the action figure version. For the and... Where you pull the thing and the head extends. Oh, I, I got it as a kid. I got it at Atlantic City while we were on vacation. I huh. was wandering the mall because I was but a tot and I couldn't gamble. So I got to go get an alien figure. I always hated it when my parents brought me to the casino. Like, what yeah. am I going to do here? And I don't mean in the last, since becoming an adult, but I mean, like, I remember going a lot when I was a kid, and it's just like, what am I going to do? I mean, we went with a bunch of families uh, back then, so it was a case of anybody who wasn't old enough to gamble, any of the adults who didn't want to gamble, they all took us over to the mall because they had, like, a big arcade there. And I remember playing, like, the X-Men arcade game, and they had, like, a carousel and things like that. And I remember going in, and they had the all these cool new alien figures and predator figures and then i think they had like dragon heart figures which all of that could probably date exactly when i was there i had the dragon heart dragon i just had figure, the knight so i definitely know uh <laughs> never had the dragon time. just the knight just the knight he was just fodder fighting all of the avengers and my ju- well, actually my justice league i wasn't an avengers <laughs> kid it's kind of the same it's kind of the same problem that the gargoyles toys are currently going through from NECA and it's just you have this massive hard plastic wingspan that can't move and how do you play with that when you got like a one and a half foot wide wingspan on top of like a one foot long yeah. dragon toy it's just kind of awkward as far as aliens go I was never frightened by xenomorphs in any of the movies growing up but when I think about it on paper, I would not want to experience anything to do with any of them as far as, like, any creature from a movie. I would not mess with xenomorphs. It, it makes me laugh that Aliens was one of the most influential movies of all time, and especially in terms of video games, that it triggered so many different video games to come off of it, yet they never were able to make a proper Aliens video game. Because, I mean, like, you think of, like, Halo, and pretty much any sci-fi shooter at this point, you can look at Aliens as a reference of how, like, the squad movements and just, like, the tactical movements that they do and um, certain scenes emulated in the video game from Aliens. But Alien isolation is probably the only alien game to date that besides the um avp games which were really good um that one nailed it when it came to the actual like terror and that helplessness of just you can't do anything to this thing so it's just you best hide and then making sure that uh the thing pops out of the air vent and stuff and you got to find the right thing to hide behind make sure it doesn't see you as you try to hide Dean, we should get you to play that. I started to play it at your house. I remember that. We got to get you to finish it. We'll live stream it. I just need a blankie. That's okay. It's such a weird juxtaposition of Alien Isolation and then Alien Fire Team, where then it's like four (laughs) men deep just mowing down thousands and thousands and thousands of them. They're not so dumb. Yeah. Run out of bullets and you just like fist fight them. Those are the aliens that they latched on to, like, sickly children, so they're just, like, really not as strong. <laughs> they latched on to other aliens, and now they're all just <laughs> malformed. <laughs> the ultimate incest. I wonder what that I don't like make. that phrase, ultimate incest. <laughs> Strike that from the record. That's keeping it in the family. <laughs> yeah. Xenomorph. Xenomorph. Definitely. Definitely my favorite. So you know for doing a a shortened Everybody Picks One episode, it's like going to be 50 minutes. We had a... I mean, that's better than three hours. Two and a half hours. Yeah. And we also did catch up because normally it'd probably be about 40. Yeah. 
Yeah, we do. We did it's explain some things. Mm -hmm. But no, it's for real. We did make a Discord. Please come and join. Um, Share me. Link in, links in the bio and uh, Instagram. So it's the there's too many links that we have that there's no proper place to share all of it. So, you know, we have a link tree. You'll see the discord link is one of the top ones. Few people found it so far, but we're officially open for business. So come on in, stay a while, come for the memes, kind of stay the, for the fun discussions. I think the whole reason we started screen refresh and all of these was because of all of the discussions we would have on movies, it helped all of us stay in touch and all of us to still kind of connect on all of these things. And I know we're lucky enough to have the three of each other and everybody else might not have that out there. So I think I like the idea of when Nick started the Discord of everybody now has a community for hey, I really love Monster Squad. I don't have anybody to talk to Monster Squad about. That's great. I'm sure a lot of other people end up liking that in our Discord. So it's all of those kinds of things of there is something for everyone and you'll always find somebody who shares all of the same wacky interests that we do. So and we are, come on in and join the fun. And we are very active on it too. It's not like some of those other ones where I've joined where it's like, hey, it's this one guy from the streamer and he's like, you see him in the list, but he never ever talks in the thing itself. Like, no, we, this is our, yeah. Burn on that streamer. <laughs> Don't at me. I will at everyone when it's time for a re new release. Suck it, streamer, in particular. <laughs> You're not better than this. I don't watch them. <laughs> nope. That wraps up a new episode of Rule of Thirds for you, Top Aliens. As always, you can reach us, again, at Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Screen Refresh, or shoot an email at ScreenRefresh at gmail.com to let us know what your top three would be or any topics you'd like to hear us discuss. Also, we now have a Discord. Come on over and chat with us and get behind-the-scenes tidbits on your favorite episodes. But that's it for us. So for Tim and Dean, this is Nick. You have a great week now, and you can catch us next on Screen Refresh on the first Monday of the month. You can also listen to our sister podcast, Don't Open This Podcast, hosted by our own resident Tim and Mike Falsigno every second and fourth Monday of the month. Are people opening the podcast? No. They just download it and they leave it. <laughs>